Hello and welcome to my video series of Biotechnics Explained in 5 Minutes, where I explain a concept in biology in less than 5 minutes. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, so hit that subscribe button and don't forget to leave your comments below because that gives me the motivation to make more videos. In today's installment, we'll be talking about Beer Lambert's Law. Simply, Beer Lambert Law relates absorbance of a sample to the concentration. So, if you have a light absorbing sample like this, and depending upon how much light it absorbs, you can have an estimation of the concentration of the molecules that is present in the solution. So it's a pretty useful method in spectroscopy, in, in whole biology. So before looking into the detailed mechanism and deriving the formula and knowing about the usage of this law, let us try to understand the workflow. So first, we need to have our sample to be loaded in a cuvette. Let's say our sample is a light absorbing sample for now. And we put the sample in a spectrophotometer. And let's see what happens inside the spectrophotometer, the detection part, what happens inside that. So there are light sources inside the spectrophotometer. Definitely, there are filter wheels, which allow specific wavelength of the light to be, uh, uh, to be falling on the specimen. And ultimately, the light which passes through the specimen hit the detector. So here is the arrangement inside the spectrophotometer. Now, according to Beer Lambert's law, the absorbance is kind of proportional to the concentration of the solution and the light path of the cuvette, the path of the light that the light travels inside the sample. Now, let's say the intensity of the light which is falling on the sample is i0 and after passing through the sample its intensity is it or let's say only i so if the sample is absorbing some amount of light then you can clearly imagine the value of it is the transmitted light intensity is lower than the incident light intensity and a ratio, a log ratio of these two intensities are actually termed as absorbance, which they related to the concentration and the path length. And this is basically the Beer Lambert law. Now, clearly, you can understand from this law, it tells us that absorbance is a function of concentration and the path length. Now, there are two assumptions. First assumption tells us that absorbance is uh, proportional to the concentration and the second assumption tells us that absor absorbance is like proportional to the path length and in a moment we would learn physically how it is possible and why it is so so if we combine these two we come up with absorbance proportional to both path length and concentration and you can remove this proportionality sign by putting it a constant this constant is known as molar extinction co coefficient. We would be talking about it later as well. So let's try to understand how this works. So imagine we have a cuvette and we have incident light and light is passing through it. And, and we took a small part of this cuvette where there is a small amount of sample of small length. Let's call it DL, the small path length. And let's call the change in intensity or the decrease in intensity if the sample is like a uh, absorbing sample so the change in in intensity for the light in order to pass that dl amount of distance is di then we can have come to a relation that decrease in light intensity per unit length is proportional to the concentration and also the intensity and you can put a minus sign in that because there is decrease, right? Now, let's try to imagine it physically. Let's say we have three solutions. And three solution has different molar ratios and different molar concentrations. So clearly you can understand di different, of the different solutions would have different concentration of the molecules inside that. Now, definitely if light passes, the same intensity of light passes through these three samples, the last samples, in the last sample, the probability that the light would be absorbed is more, right? 
So the decrease in the light in intensity would be maximal in for the last sample. So already the change in uh, incident intensity versus that final intensity is dependent upon the concentration. And now we know how. It is also dependent on the light path. Because let's say we have two cuvettes. One has a length, let's say L, and another has a 2L. So the cuvette which has more, uh, which has a length of 2L, when light passes through that cuvette, the probability is more that it would encounter more light, more uh, uh, solution particles, right? So more light would be absorbed. The probability is more. So that's how it is both con uh, related to concentration and also the path length. Now, we can start deriving the beer lambert law. So according to, by definition, the decrease in light intensity per unit length is proportional to the concentration. And then we can write the differential equation like this. And in order to solve the differential equation, we have to integrate because we are talking about a small portion of the cuvette in order to understand what happens, how the light in intensity is changing throughout the cuvette we have to integrate this throughout the length and if we start integrating it with proper limits we would arrive at a formula which is like log i t by i zero equal to a constant times concentration into the path length now by definition this log ratio is known as transmittance and an inverse of transmittance is known as absorbance and absorbance is given by E epsilon C L. So that, that is the Beer Lambert law. And now we understand physically how concentration and the path length is related and why it is related with the absorbance. Now, Beer Lambert law has wide variety of applications. Beer Lambert law could be used to check bacterial growth kinetics, it could be used for ELISA for measurement of several disease diagnoses and cytokine measurement and etc it can be used to check protein concentration check the concentration of nucleic acid and purity of the nucleic acid and many more so let's just talk about a little bit of their uh, usage so first of all a bacterial growth kinetics can easily cal calculate it by spectrophotometer so let's say we have a bacterial culture which is growing overnight we can take a small amount of the culture in a cuvette and we can read it in a spectrophotometer at specific wavelength and it would give us a absorbance value later that absorbance value from that absorbance value and how the absorbance value change over time we can understand the bacterial growth kinetics very nicely not only that elisa is also a direct application of beer lambert's law how let's see so in elisa indirect ELISA or direct ELISA, anything where you detect uh, the antibody against a particular antigen is based on a color reaction whose absorbance is measured by a spectrophotometer. So here you can see some known antigens are already coated in the well and now you add antibody which need to be measured and in this case it would be like patient serum, serum or anything. Then you put the secondary antibodies with this enzyme enzyme link and whenever you give a color a, a, a substrate it would give a color which can be measure, measured the color intensity could be measured by absorbance right and that would tell us quantitatively that how much of the antigen is present or let's say how much of the antibody is present so that is how elisa is also based on beer lambert's law not only these the day-to-day -day usage of our lab, any molecular biology lab is nanodrop. Using this nanodrop, people frequently calculate the concentration of the DNA or RNA sample and also their purity. The base stacking interaction, the pi cloud of the bases, absorb UV light. So that is how uh, we can get a spectrum like this, DNA or RNA absorbs maximally at 260 nanometer and we can measure the purity of the dna by the spectrophotometer mediated uh, measurements when there are impurity this nanodrop can also display that because let's say in purification there is a 
quant contamination of like uh, phenol or guanidine isothiocyanide and all these things can be measured by the nanodrop because nanodrop previously knows their absorbance range right that is how absorbance turns out to be an important property of any solutions by which we can understand their concentration and believe me in day to day molecular biology lab these absorbance spectroscopy or beer Lam usage of beer lambert law is a crucial or the base of any lab these days i hope you enjoyed this video if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up don't forget to like share and subscribe thank you